Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Episode 16, Thoughts. This episode is called End of the Beginning. Another episode I love. Spoilers for the MCU leading up to, including this episode. No spoilers for anything MCU after this episode. So, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the site after Strikers. I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dig in. So, we open on Garrett and Triplet discussing the various safe houses they've experienced. And, yeah, you can really understand why, you know, some are, are better than others. And Mike attacks. So, yeah. Like they say later in the episode, clearly they are getting closer. And, yeah, I like that the, you know, this meeting, you know, you can understand why Colson AC calls for a face-to-face -face meeting. And I think that is, right, um, Sky says they should obey the rules and the other, you know, Fitz and, and Simmons are like, flabbergasted, just completely, you know, and yeah, I mean, we were told that AC started changing after the the treatment, so maybe that's what we're seeing with, with Sky as well. And yeah, Sky becomes an agent, and I want to say it was May who, you know, uh, what's the word, who got Fitz and Simmons up there so they could congratulate her as well. And then Sitwell is called to the Lemurian Star. Hmm. I, like I said, I'm not going to spoil, but just if you have happened to watch anything... MCU after this, you may well know where that is going. I like Sky and Garrett meeting for the first time, as it were. It feels really weird to hear Sky call someone Sir. I'm not sure that's the like the very first time it's happened, but yeah, just feels weird. And, yeah, um, Melinda May overhears them talking about the, the blood work, and I like, you know, Fitz is like, Simmons, we have a visitor. And, yeah, Mike goes up against Blake, and... I really appreciate that Blake, you know, because he fired, you know, he fires five shots into Mike's chest. And before you ask, the reason he's not shooting him in the face is because the chest is a significantly bigger target. And there appears to be a lag. Oh, maybe the lag's cleared up. Right, anyway, you know, it's, and, and him shooting in the chest and and hitting but only slowing him down is a lot better than missing the head and not at all slowing him down but yeah you know he takes out the clip puts in the other clip and yeah tags him as yeah and and Simmons is going is planning to analyze Sky's blood at the hub which is legitimately clever and yeah the the you know they find what appears to be the the clairvoyant Thomas Nash as played by Brad Dorif awesome always love seeing him and stuff the, you know he's one of those actors like even without like he literally never actually says a word on camera in this episode but he still manages to be really creepy and you know he can do other I gotta admit when I think of Tom, of, of Brad Riff I mostly think of him being creepy in in roles not in real life but you know like the 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 obvious one is is he's the voice of Chucky 
in the Child's Play series. I Is he still? I don't know if he still is. I haven't watched the more recent ones. For a while he was, at least. Um, and he is in the... Um, in Alien Resurrection, also. But he, you know, he's not creepy, he's incredibly compelling, also in uh, Star Trek Voyager. And... Let's see that... Yeah, and, you know, Ward shoots him. And, you know, they're like, what did you do? You went for the chest. And Fitz found finds the the tap that May has had set up. Let's see, yeah, and they start talking. You know, Coulson is like, wait, maybe Nash was a prop, you know. And it is like, cause yeah, the fact that the you know they they saw his face and they heard the the machine say words, but like. Who know you know that they know that whoever the real clairvoyant is can actually like what's the word um, the the real clairvoyant can control people why wouldn't he also be able to control the the machine or or I guess possibly maybe telling Nash you know, here's what you should be saying using the, the thing in the eye that we've seen before. And, you know, we learn, you know, maybe he can't, maybe the clairvoyant can't read minds, but the clairvoyant definitely is reading files. And, yeah, the clairvoyant is an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. And, yeah, I, I quite like, you know, Fitz, he's not that much better than Simmons at, you know, making up a, a lie in in the, when when he has to, when, you know, when trying to cover for doing something, for, you know, being caught doing something. And, yeah, you know, he, he bumps into, or, yeah, pretty much bumps into Sky and they do the what what thing and you know he I, th I think he says something like I wasn't doing anything wrong she's like I didn't say you were doing anything. wait what were you doing <laughs> because if you say that obviously the other person is going to the you know and yeah he explains about May's uh, you know the line and Sky says cut the line now before she has a chance you know and you know he manages to and she she doesn't get the to to do the the report that she was going to but she says it's report 95 the last time it was report 93 so she reported something in between the the two which you know you obviously as you watch i based on the end of the episode i i do think she might actually not be a the the she she might not be working with the clairvoyant but you know she wasn't there when the the you know the you can understand why she was suspected the the for for um what mike did to i guess i should be calling him deathlock since he did say mike peterson is dead what death for what Deathlock did to Nash uh, Blake? Too many names for me to keep track of. Uh, you know, somehow May was only like knocked away. You know, and the um, let's see, but yeah, you know, based on the end of the episode, Victoria is part of it, and she did manage to excuse herself. You know, she made it sound like, oh, you know, I don't believe that you've really got something, but then we realize by the end of the episode she wanted to be able to, to help fight against the the agents and for the, the clairvoyant. That's why she was a very tense standoff 
And yeah, gotta say, seeing Sky point a gun at May and AC point a gun at May is very like yeah, did not see that coming. And I like the the little exchange, you know, she's like, no, it's not what you think. This is you know, these are it's the it's an icer gun, you know. She wasn't trying to kill Fitz, she was trying to knock him out. And and AC responds, these are real. And yeah, I got a I, very, very cool cliffhanger. Really excited. I you know, I'm glad I'm gonna be watching the next episode tomorrow instead of having to wait a week. To find out the ending of the the resolution of the the cliffhanger, and let's see, right, and the the yeah, some some MDB trivia for this episode. When Deathlock is seen on the screen through night vision, his appearance bears a striking resemblance to his look in the comics. Very cool. Let's see. Right, and apparently Brad Dourif has played someone who has questionable psychic abilities before. <laughs> and, like, according to his S.H.I.E.L.D. ID, Agent Blake's birthday is March 12, 1961. Actor Titus Willower's birthday is March 12, 1962. So that was probably intentional. And let's see. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I thought that the idea of IMDb trivia spoiler tags was spoilers for the thing that it's for, not for spoilers for later stuff. Okay, so just be aware if you're going to look up IMDb trivia for this episode, don't look up the spoiler one. You know, don't uncover the spoiler one if you've only watched until this episode because there's a yeah. Um, I'll be fine. I'll I'll try to forget. I've heard other spoilers for this show. It's it's fine. Um, but but yeah, I you know the the it was very you know when yeah near the end when we when the ship the plane starts to, you know, turn, yeah, at the time, we're like, oh, you know, I mean, May is the pilot, you know, it makes sense that she did that, but, you know, she's saying she has no idea what it's about, and, and I also like the, when, when, um, AC confronts Ward, you know, about, yeah, I've, about whether or not he's working for the, the clairvoyant, that was also very, very tense, and the, yeah, just very, um, yeah, great scene. I think that is all that I have for this episode. Oh, right, right. One thing I really, really like, you know, in very few appearances, they've done a lot to, to really get, you know, like Deathlock is getting closer and closer to his comic counterpart. The, the you know, it hasn't been that many appearances ago that we saw Mike come to with with burnt face and you know yeah lo he lost part of one of his legs you know then we see him be given the the other you know the the uh, what's it called like robot leg and now like a lot of him has been you know altered like I really appreciate that because it is the kind of you know we don't need to see every single individual step along the way. 
you know, I, I think it would have been a mistake if we saw him the way we do now. And the last time we saw him was just like, let's say when when Reyna caused that massive explosion. You know, then it'd be like, where did that come from? You know, but we've seen a little bit of robot stuff. And now there's a lot of robot stuff. And most of it happened off screen. And we're just seeing the result because... We, you know, we can we can deduce clearly he's still being worked on. They're upgrading him every so often. I think that may be right. Um, the at one point John Garrett says third degree burn doesn't hurt the area but hurts the area around it. I think that might actually be true. And, ah, right, I uh, was not really a fan of the, uh, referring to a, someone who's, like, basically disabled as, I don't know if I really want to say, I'll, I'll spell it, F-R-E-A-K, not really a fan of that, I, I'd like to think that Garrett was saying, that's what this guy is for the things he's doing. But, like, a lot of people have used language like that just about people who are not, you know, able-bodied and of able mind. So, not really a fan of that. I, I feel like, you know, he could have just, like, made a crack about the idea of being psychic or something. You know, like there's a, um, the the featured user review says, bet the clairvoyant didn't see that one coming. You know, just, yeah, something like that. Um, I, th I think it was smart of them f to, to wait until now to make Sky a shield agent. You know, I, I feel like by this point in the series, there's a there's a good chance that a, a significant chunk of the audience are on board with the idea of this government agency being the good guys, where if they had just made her a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent in episodes 2 or 3, you know, some people might have still needed some convincing. Personally, I still need some convincing, but I acknowledge that for a lot of people, what they've seen so far is enough. Right, I, I liked when when Triplet and Ward talk about th how, you know, it's personal for them with the clairvoyant. And I think that is... Right, uh, I, I like the the plan. It really did make a lot of sense. You know, if if the clairvoyant was psychic rather than a shield agent, I think the plan would have worked. You know, so that was and and it's also you know, of course, the plan is going to fail in some way because otherwise, you know, it's like, well. I guess they just capture their clairvoyant. Then, then what? Um, right. I like the detail that apparently Poe came up with the name clairvoyant, and the real clairvoyant, you know, isn't a big fan of of that name. And we get a repeat of the the thing when you know their clairvoyant doesn't like to be touched. You know, now it makes more sense why it was phrased that way. Because that is, you know, that that's an interesting way to phrase it. It doesn't feel, it, it doesn't come completely naturally. But, yeah, you know, a, a number of disabled people don't really want you to, yeah, don't, don't like to be touched. Uh, you know, it, yeah. Um... Yeah, that is it for this one. So, I am, I, I swear I'm not secretly a bad guy.
but I am also not joining Agent Coulson in looking for Santa Claus. Make my marvel.